it's Pete Mindwise Man's channel aka Maverick Outdoors and it's a glorious sunny Saturday in the middle of May 2018. But with this sort of little I suppose edification if you want to call it of a wild camp I'm calling it stealth style inverted commas quote style um, because obviously I want to be out of sight out of mind so there's lots of different reasons why one might need or want to do a stealth camp depending on the location the purposes behind it and that sort of thing. But the way I've actually set out the basher as you saw previously um, I've actually got my foot end and head end in line with a main thoroughfare sort of about 100 meters over there is one of the main paths and the same my foot end there's a path whereas the length and broadside behind me and of course in front my opening there's less of a sort of an access to actually come across this way so stealth style as in being in a lovely part of the woods being off the beaten track you know what really is stealth camping it's basically in a nutshell of being somewhere where you don't want to be come across uh, or you're not supposed to be or it's just you know wanting time out out of sight out of mind as my situation is of course I've got all the complementary colouring of my clothing drab colours mossy oak shirt it's a nylon shirt but it's sort of breathable it's got some vents in the back and of course my lightweight cotton trousers, my desert boots that are also breathable and as you can see sitting on my folding stool within the space of where the camo netting is either end, my head end and foot end um, you know there's less sort of outline shape that you could see if the camo netting wasn't there you'd actually be able to see me easier yeah if someone is really up close but there again there was an example of the guy that was what 15 meters from me and I know he hadn't he didn't actually notice me at all if someone's like five ten meters away and they're actually looking around and they're inquisitive they're looking at the wildlife yeah of course they're going to come across me but it's not as if i'm right camped up right next to one of the trails so i've got a lot of things going on here i've got a nice view it's a little bit open not right chock-a-block with the trees it's safe i'm away from any widow makers the sunrise the open side of my basher was exposed to the sun so that's nice and it will be as the sun goes all the way around for the rest of the afternoon. I've mentioned many many times before about reading your terrain so as you're walking through I knew I had an idea of one of three pitches I was going to come to but these have all been originated from previous times of reading the terrain and knowing what I want from the uprights to fix the tarp or whatever sort of shelter system you're using um, so that everything sort of blends in, so the whole of the aspect sort of harmonises from the view you want from the sun striking on your pitch um, to the usable bits of foliage and also upright trees, whether small sapling trees or bigger trees. So the tarp being virtually in the exact sort of shape and proportion I want it was actually positioned where we've got the fixing along here which is a good 45 degree angle which when you're pitching a basher you actually want so I wouldn't really want sometimes yeah you might have to bring it forward but you've got the best sort of torsion when these front corners are at 45 degrees just as that one is over there that's near enough 45 degrees which then means you've got really good torsion along this top edge whereas if it sort of came just slightly off 90 degrees there's more chance of there being a sort of a bellow or a dip and of course that's really going to be affected if there's any rain and then of course at the back that's pulled back and it just happened to be slightly off of a 90 degree but it still gives the effect I wanted. I've also got the potential although I didn't actually want to but if I did need to is actually extending this straight onto that tree there which replicates the torsion of the rear one that's going off just slightly off the 90 degrees but still does the job so without having to actually go and cut any uprights which I could do there's a few around um, you know I don't really want to go damaging unnecessarily any living trees and that sort of thing uh, there can sometimes be fallen bits of wood which might be in good condition but can sort of like replicate basher poles but I didn't want to actually use basher poles or any extendable poles at all that were man-made. 
um, I wanted to use everything that was already here before my basher existed, if that makes sense. Still keeping the same footprint, if I wanted to or needed to and had to have a low profile, say the weather was really bad conditions, I could then make the A-shape tarp, that sort of shape, and the upright for the ridge line would be where I've got the fixing already over there. And the fixing along this one to just there. So that would be my ridge line upright and the same the other end. And that bottom edge would remain where it was and this upright line would obviously come down to the ground. So the entrance points would be either end. And just going over a few factors uh, whereby people sort of do inquire and just giving you other examples whereby you know I've had explained about the A shape with a ridge line being the roof. Um, you know, people could then ask questions or inquire and say, well, what would you do in bad weather because it's a little bit open. Yeah, I mean, I could have rainfall here. Still keep the setup I've got, but unless the wind was actually really blowing excessively sort of in and making my sleep patch wet, then of course I would just drop, again, back to these two lines, this one, and just take it down lower or take it away from the tree and fix it into the ground. And the same that end, everything stays the same except for the two front corners and this one I could either take down on the upright of the tree or take it further down and fix it into the ground. As far as the camo netting, I've had these two, um, they're about three metres by one and a half and of course they stretch and can adapt to a different size, so like a concertina effect or stretch and go longer but not as high. Um, and so I've had these two for well over ten years now. And if I wanted to go absolutely super duper stealthy, you know, I could acquire a massive great big camo net that used by the military that goes over their vehicles and that sort of thing, or even a number of these, um, and actually connect them up and actually get a longer length to go right over the tarp as well. I mean, but you know, I was just going to use the equipment that I've got to create the effect of, you know, being out of sight, out of mind, and just a very simple example, as I say, it's not escape and evasion. The uh, whole aspect was just to be sort of concealed as best as possible with the kit that I've got and uh, just going as I'm calling it stealth style. So I hope you've found it of interest and uh, you know just getting simple ideas and enjoying the outdoors and sort of planning ahead you know if you know what the weather's going to be like if you can plan it and sort of know where you're going to go even if you're exploring new terrains that's all part of the excitement and the adventure of actually sort of wild camping taking your kit and seeing what you come across but obviously with skills and knowledge. And as always, thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon, probably in a, another Woodland Wild Camp. Cheers.